welcome to the Partner Business Technical Support Team. My name is Phil and I'll be taking you through some of the basic programming for some of our CBUS sensors. The method of programming we're going to be using today is what's known as occupancy detection. What that basically means is that the sensor is going to determine whether the room's being occupied or not. The way it goes about doing this is basically if I have an, if I have a, an empty room that's not being used, I walk into that room and the light's currently off. The sensor through infrared will detect my movements and as a result will do two things. The first thing it's going to trigger those lights on, obviously because the room is now being employed or used. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to basically start an internal timer. Now any subsequent, subsequent movement within that room is going to basically re-trigger this timer. It's only when I leave the room and that timer completely times out, it's going to turn those lights off. Hence we get the occupancy control. What I'd like to do now is just quickly take you through some of the different types of sensors that are available within the CBUS range. Uh, the first one is the 5750WPL series. Now this is an uh, outdoor sensor and it basically has 110 degrees worth of uh, sensing. Now it's purely just a infrared detector. The, uh, another type of sensor that we have is the 5751L. Now this particular sensor is a 90 degree sensor, typically mounted in the corner of a room. Now this is an indoor sensor uh, and typical applications include sort of meeting rooms, wardrobes, that sort of thing. Uh, the next series of sensors we've got is what's known as the uh, flush mount. Now this particular series is a 5753 series. It comes as a standard infrared sensor as well as what's known as a multi-sensor. Multi-sensors include functions like light level harvesting, bank switching, all the things we won't be covering today. Uh, the next, next series of sensor we'll be covering is what's known as the 5754 series. Now this is a surface mount. So if you're struggling with space behind the ceiling to install one of these things, what you can do is you can use one of these ones which basically just get mount, gets mounted on the surface of that ceiling or wall or wherever you're installing it. Now these ones here do come in a standard infrared sensor as well as a multi-sensor as I uh, mentioned before. Uh, within this exercise what we'll be using is we'll be using one of the uh, CBUS training boards that we, that we use for our CBUS basic courses and touchscreen courses and the like. Uh, the components that we'll be using for this instructional video will be a 8 channel dimmer with an onboard power supply. We'll be using a 90 degree sensor which I'll just quickly plug in now. We'll also be using a PC interface, a USB PC interface. Now I'd recommend using the Clipsal CBUS PC interface. Using adapters you can experience problems with. Uh, also later on when we start programming up some override switching we'll be using the single gang key. Uh, start standard 2000 range. Seeing that we now know what components we're using, we might start uh, doing a bit of programming. Once you've opened up Toolkit and you've got all the com uh, components connected together, what we need to do now is we basically need to program up the dimmer with a group for the uh, sensor control. And to do that, all we need to do is we need to open up the dimmer. And we're going to be using channel 8 of the dimmer. So all I'm, all I'm going to do is create a brand new group. I'll call it sensor group. Something nice and simple just for our understanding. However, if this was a live, if this was a live site, you'd probably use something a bit more meaningful, such as bedroom, bathroom, and the like. Press OK. Now, to test this to make to make sure it's working, what you need to do is, uh, there's, there's a quick way of doing this. Uh, if you right click on the channel, then press turn group on, turn group off, you'll, you will be able to see this particular lamp here turn on and off. And I'll just demonstrate that now. So I'll go right click, turn group on. As we can see that the lamp is actually turned on, do right click, turn off, and it's actually turned that lamp off. So, so once you've done that, just press OK, save those changes, and we've actually just programmed the dimmer unit up. So now that we've programmed up the dimmer, what we need to do is we need to program up the sensor. And it is relatively easy for the occupancy detection settings of functionality. Now, I'll just quickly go through on the PC how to program that up now. 
So what we need to do is we need to find the sensor located within the network window. Double click the sensor. That should open up the programming interface for that particular sensor. And what we need to do is within the motion and light section, just select the group we created uh, previously. From there, if this checkbox is checked, it will carry down to motion and darkness. All we need to do from here is press this button, so the three dots, three lines, and then select 20 seconds for testing. Now, after you've tested it, so this is after the commissioning um, period, basically you need to adjust that to what, what the uh, desired time is, say five minutes, 10 minutes, or like. Press OK, press Apply, save those settings, and then go and test that sensor. So programming the sensor is that easy. If you just want to have a sensor controlling a set of lights, you don't need to do any more than that. What I'll, uh, what I'll go through shortly is how to program up an override switch. What I'd like to do is just quickly take you through some of what's happening behind the scenes of the sensor from what we've programmed. So under the functions tab, you've got two columns, MD, motion and darkness, and ML, motion and light. So let's just say, for example, I've got a sensor controlling a set of lights within a room. I walk into that room and those lights are turned off. What I want the sensor to do is what's programmed in the motion and darkness section. So basically the first thing is, I want the lights to turn on. That's where we get the on key. The next thing I want to do is that I want it to start an internal timer that given a period of no movement, it will turn the lights off. And that's where we get the re-trigger timer from. Now, the motion and light is basically saying that if I walk into the room, the sensor turns the lights on, the lights come on, any motion detected when the lights are on, so motion and light, it's going to re-trigger that timer. Now, there is an important point when it comes to re-trigger timer. Re-trigger timer will only re-trigger the timer if that group is already on, so if the lights are already on. If I walk into a room that the lights, let's just say I've got a huge amount of uh, ambient light pouring in, the sensor won't turn those lights on because it will deem that there's sufficient light. So this is where the re-trigger timer occurs. If the group is on, the timer will start. If the lights aren't on to begin with, the timer won't reset or won't start. So what I'm going to take you through now is how to program up an override on switch. So to do this, uh, we're going to be using the Single Gang 2000 series switch and we'll start our programming there. And then we'll join the program for the switch with the sensor thereafter. So what I'll do is, I'll just open up the single gang key input now. And I'm going to program the same sensor group which I put in previously into that single gang key switch. Once I've done that, I'm going to have it as on off, press OK, engine, and then just test that out. So if I come back over to the training board and turn that light on, light comes on. Turn that button off, light goes off. However, to test its functionality, if I turn that light on, trigger the sensor, what should happen is after 20 seconds, the sensor should turn the light off. Now what we want is an override on, and that won't work in our particular case. So what we need to do is we need to reconfigure the sensor a little bit to suit. And just to prove that this is actually happening, we'll just wait a couple more seconds for the light to switch off. So the light switched off. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go over to the sensor and I'll show you how to program up the sensor to accommodate for this. So I'll open up the sensor. And within the sensor we've got this section called Sensor Enable Disable. What we want to do is we want to program the same sensor group that we have for this key switch as well as the sensor. So this is the load that's basically within that room. And we want to basically say that this group, whenever it's on, is going to disable the sensor. Press apply, press OK. And that's basically all the programming you need to do to get this functionality. Now you might be thinking, okay, if the sensor turns itself on, it's gonna, it's, if the sensor turns the light's on when it detects a person, it's going to disable itself. 
That won't be the case. The sensor does have enough intelligence within it to basically know that it's not going to disable itself. It's only going to disable itself if that group is switched by another unit on the CBUS network. So this is sort of coming from the distributed intelligence which CBUS is basically based on. So just to test this, what I'll do is I'll trigger the sensor. We'll give it about 20 seconds or so and we should see that the sensor turns itself off. Then the test will, sorry, the test we'll do after that is we'll basically turn the light on, try triggering the sensor again and see how that works. So the light's actually turned off. So we've just proved that the sensor hasn't disabled itself. So what I'll do is I'll turn that light on now and then I'll trigger the sensor and hopefully we should see the sensor not switching the load off. So we'll give that another 20 seconds and we'll see how that goes. Okay, as you can see here, the sensor hasn't turned the light off. So we've just proven that the override on switch is working. What I'll do now is I'll quickly demonstrate how to program a program a master off. So just going back to the uh, sensor, all we need to do is we need to basically switch it over to enables, press apply, save it. And that should be the programming for it. So to test this functionality, all we need to do is basically turn the lights on. If I trigger that sensor, after 20 seconds, what we should find is the sensor switches those lights off. So now, if I go to re-trigger that sensor, it's just a matter of, and then the light comes on. To turn the light off, all I need to do is press the key switch, and what I should find now is, obviously the lights are gone off, if I try to re-trigger it, because the message was sent from another unit, the sensor knows that, and as a result, has disabled itself. So, that's basically how to program a remote on and a remote off. What I'll quickly do now is, I'll give you a quick familiarization with how to program some of the uh, other sensors, the, the 5753s uh, and the 5754s. What I'm quickly going to do is quickly show you how to program a multi-sensor with the same functionality. The process is basically the same, however the appearance is somewhat different. Now what I've done is I've taken out the 5751L, put in a 5 7.5.3.P.E.I.R.L. So this is the multi-sensor version. And when we open up the pro uh, programming interface for this particular unit, you'll find that it's a lot more complicated, well it looks a lot more complicated, than what we've been dealing with previously. So what I'll do is I'll quickly open up the programming interface for the sensor. Once we've got this programming interface open, I'll quickly show you some of the familiar reality, or something that you might uh, be familiar with, with the previous um, version of programming with this particular window. So what we've got as function, we've got day move, and if you remember, that basically means the same as motion and light. Then we've got night move, which also basically means motion in darkness. And if you have a look at the key functions, and if you compare that to the previous sensor we're dealing with, the key functions are basically exactly the same. Now to program that functionality, the same functionality of occupancy detection, what we need to do is we need to go key switch 1, sensor group, that will automatically carry it over to key group 2, the night move. All you need to do from here is basically select the amount of time. So I remember, remember before how I said uh, a minimum of 20 seconds for testing. Press OK. Now, what we'll do, what we'll also do is I'll program an override on. So to do that, if we go sensor group, 
within that same section and whenever that group is uh, it, whenever this group gets switched on what we'll do is we'll disable the sensor so if we press apply it's going to give me it's going to give us a warning basically saying that if you use multiple sensors and you've got the same group that the sensor is controlling within the uh, occupancy um, uh, override section you're going to get irregular behavior that's all that it basically means if you have multiple sensors and you have the same sort of configuration you're going to, you're going to encounter problems and you're going to have to program it a different way so this only really works when you've got a single sensor otherwise just remember you're going to have to program it differently so if I just press save anyway save it to the unit what we'll quickly do is we'll test this functionality out so what I have is I have a switch that will turn the lights on and it's going to disable the sensor so we've got an on override as soon as I turn the switch off it's basically going to send an off message the sensor knows that it you know to disable or to re-enable itself and as a result the sensor will work normally so what I should find is if I turn this light on I trigger this sensor what we should find is after 20 seconds the light shouldn't turn off so we'll give it a couple of, we'll give it say 20 seconds and see whether it works so what I'll do now is just to prove that it does it say if I turn the dis uh, override off, so off the key switch, the sensor still works. If I press the key switch, then re-trigger the sensor, the sensor turns the light on, and after 20 seconds, the sensor is going to turn those lights off. So what we have is a on override from the actual key switch. And you can program an off override quite easily, the same way we did that first sensor. If we give it a couple more seconds, we should find that that sensor turns that light off, as you, as you can see there. This concludes the short course in relation to programming CBUS sensors for occupancy detection only. For more information in relation to the products themselves, please refer to the data sheets or the installation instructions. Uh, please feel free to give the technical support team a call, uh, as they'll be more than happy to give you a hand with whatever inquiry you have. Also, if you're interested in undertaking some uh, training, there will be a number at the end of this video. Uh, feel free to give that number a call uh, and just inquire about any sort of courses that you're interested in. What I'd recommend is the CBUS Basic course, if this is fairly new to you. Thank you for watching.